Tonight, we bring you the story of Julie Burton, a cheerleader, but strangely enough, a cheerleader without cheer. For a perverse crime is about to strike Julie down, a crime from the hands of one she trusted. The day begins, ordinarily enough, within the Burton residence. Mom, I can't find my panties. <laughs> my special cheerleading panties. Did you look in the hamper? I've looked everywhere, Mom. They're gone. Tryouts are this afternoon. Maybe you could wear your gym shorts under your skirt. Mom, Miss Gulch is a maniac about looks. She'll notice if I'm not wearing them. If I'm going to be captain or even make the squad, I've got to look perfect. OK, OK, I'll look in the laundry basket. They're bound to show up somewhere. That's probably them right now. <laughs> Ready to go? No, not yet. Hey, did you read that thing in the newspaper this morning? <laughs> this guy's motorcycle, it crashed into the side of a car, and then the bowling ball flew off the back, and then it knocked somebody's head off. <laughs> Angela, I can't find my panties. Julie, no. Oh, well, it must have been your brother. Well, that was my first thought, too, but it's not him. He doesn't do anything bad anymore. Mom caught him, and he's on probation. Really? Boy, I'd like to see that. <laughs> well. Oh, Matthew! Come here, boy. Come say hello to Angela and be nice or I'll tell Mom you've been bad. Hello, Angela. He's been defanged. <laughs> this is the little brother that I always wanted, a broken, beaten husk of a being. Look. <laughs> You can even do this. <laughs> Julie, I can't find them anywhere. You're gonna have to wear your gym shorts. I'm sure Miss Gulch will understand. Our old cheerleading sponsor would have, but not Miss Gulch. Be on time and look perfect. That's all she cares about. I'm sure Miss Gulch isn't perfect. <laughs> yes, she is. And she's really pretty, too, for a gym teacher. <laughs> morning, everybody. Oh, good morning, Norman. Here you go, sweetie. Norman, you look so nice. Oh, thank you. You don't usually dress this nicely just for school. Well, I feel if I'm a teacher, I should set a good example for the kids. Uh-huh. I hear there's a new teacher, a Miss Gulch. Yeah, I think I've met her. Listen, Eileen, I hate to ask you this, but since you had the day off today, would you do me a favor and drop this jacket at the cleaners for of me? Of course. Oh, thanks. Gotta go. Don't want to be late. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, Mom. Bye, honey. Have bye, a good bye, day. Bye-bye. Oh, Julie, good luck today. Uh. I don't need luck. I need my panties. Ready? Okay. V, V, I, V, I, T, T, O. Okay, candidates. Cheerleading tryouts are in 10 minutes. Nobody's late. 310, try out for cheerleader. 311, you can try out for the band. Oh. Angela, your socks are uneven again. One of my knees is higher than the other. Well, <laughs> fix it. Yes, Miss Gulch. Uh, Mr. Ellis. Uh, what is it, Miss Gulch? Your tie's crooked. Thank you. And there's lint on your shoulder. Thank you. Is that all? Mm, not even close. But I really don't have time for this now. I have to insist that Mr. Lamb help me clean the gym equipment. I sent him a note about it. Hi! Hey, listen. I just heard a great one. Knock, knock. Your soccer team's using my equipment, and it's filthy. The volleyballs are a disgrace, and the badminton birdies desperately need soaking. We'll be cleaning them after school. Wear something casual. You're supposed to say who's there. <laughs> Watch out for her, Norman. I think she likes you. <laughs> First, I lose my panties, and now my pom-poms are gone. Your pom-poms, too? Yeah, it's like someone's out to get me. Hey, don't worry, Julie. You'll make the squad. You're the best. Hey, you'll be captain, and I'll be co-captain, just like every single year since eighth grade. No, here. Take my pom-poms, Julie. I mean, God, it's the least I can do for you after you taught me the cheers and helped me with my beauty tips. No, I couldn't do that. Wait a minute. Aren't there some spare pom-poms up in the equipment room? Yeah, I think so. That's right. Yeah, awesome. yeah, because my boyfriend, Hedgehog. Well, I mean, your boyfriend, Hedgehog. My ex. <laughs> anyway, he took me in there once, and I think that I saw some pom-poms up near the ceiling. <laughs> that's great! Oh, that's 
That's great. You guys go on. I'm gonna go get him, okay? <laughs> okay. Wait, Julie, you better hurry up, because if you're late, you're not a cheerleader. And if you're not a cheerleader, you might as well be ugly. <laughs> or smart. <laughs> Maybe somebody is out to get me. Nah, that's silly. Most curious. Someone or something has trapped our Julie in an untenable position. And speaking of being trapped in an untenable position, it's time for a commercial. Thanks for telling Mom I pulled your hair. Next time, there won't be any witnesses. <laughs> Matthew, aren't you going to ask me what's wrong? Can't you see how desperate I am? Hey. <coughs> what is it? I'm no longer a cheerleader. Jesus, how could that have happened? <laughs> Golly, why, you're one of the best cheerleaders at school. All right, just stop it. Stop what? Come on, this is the new me. The little brother you always wanted. I don't want the new you, I want the old you. I want the old you to figure out some scheme to get me back on. S something dirty and, and low. Something slimy that rakes in the sewer. Something only you could do! Why, I'd be happy to sign a letter of protest. A letter? The Pope could write a letter. I need someone to get something done! What good are you if you're not gonna scheme? Wait a minute. Are you saying that I could only be effective when being a criminal? That I couldn't get anything done just as a normal human being? You believe this, Eli? <laughs> Well, you're wrong. I can help you. And I won't have to break my probation and do it. I'll just use my sense of justice, skill, and native wit. What are we looking for? Clues. Maybe something in Angela's locker will help us. Someone's coming. <laughs> Hello, Connie. Oh, hi, Matt. Hey, listen, congratulations on making captain. You really deserved it. Well, I thought so. <laughs> I love it when you girls wave your pom-poms around. It's much more interesting than actually being able to see the game. <laughs> Cheerleading fascinates me. For instance, 
How do you girls tell your pom-poms apart? Um, do you mean how do we know we haven't accidentally taken another girl's pom-poms? Look, I take my name on mine, so I couldn't possibly have taken Julie's. I, I know you didn't. It's just I'm not so sure about Angela, you know? You know you're right there. I wouldn't trust that sneaky gossip. I mean, no one does. In fact, one time I saw her, she was... So I just watched that Connie. You know, you can tell her friends by the daggers in their backs. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Angela. You like. You know, these girls are more complex than I thought. Who would ever look at those blank, vacant faces and realize there's actually a mind at work? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Never mind, what'd you find in Frida's locker? Oh, curling iron, hairbrush, hairspray, hair rollers, bobby pins, and the U.S. Army Guide to Explosives and Demolitions. Well, that's odd. What would she be doing with hair rollers? Yeah. Ammonia. Well, we'll just take these. Eli, we're getting real close. We'll take a look at the scene of the crime, the equipment room. Then after that, we'll gather all our suspects together and lay this little brain buster to bed. Wow. This is exciting. I feel just like that great detective heart to heart. Thank you. So, does anybody know why we're here? Uh, do you mean here in this room or here on this planet? <laughs> Hey, Lamb. Dwight. Did uh, Matt call you, too? Nah, my wife brought home Bolero, and I took the first bus anywhere. <laughs> okay, they're all here. We can get started now. Your attention, please. Now, we're all here today to unmask a murderer. Murderer? <laughs> A murderer of a young girl's hopes and dreams. Now, you all had a motive to keep my sister off the cheerleading squad. Some more than others. Some badly enough to stop at nothing. Someone like you. Now that is ridiculous. She's my best friend. Until she took your boyfriend. Yeah, but I don't care. I'm over him. Over him? Uh, <laughs> Why, that's a rather interesting comment from someone who wrote on her notebook 427 times, Mrs. Angela Hedgehog. <laughs> All right. All right. So I do still love him. And Julie stole him from me. So yes, I took her panties. I wanted to hurt her. <laughs> but I didn't push you into the equipment room. No. That's right. You hated her, but you wouldn't really benefit if she was off the squad. Unlike you. I didn't take a boyfriend. I don't even like tattoos. <laughs> but you wanted to be captain. Bad. Bad enough to do just about anything. But she tipped her hand when she bought her captain bars one week before tryouts. Oh. Well, all right. I hated her. Miss Always Captain, Miss Top of the Pyramid. I've had her bony knees in my back ever since eighth grade. So yes, I took your stupid pom-poms. I tied weights to the end of them and I threw them off the pier. So now your pom-poms sleep with the fishes. Ha! <laughs> I didn't throw you in the equipment room, I didn't. Oh, I know you didn't. You see, that would have taken real hatred. That would have taken you. But Julie and I are friends. Uh, she even did my hair for tryouts. She was grooming me for the squad. Oh, she was grooming you, all right. Grooming you for disaster. <gasps> all right. All right, it's true. I hate her. She put the perm rods in, and then she went to watch Love Connection. When she came back, it was too late. I looked like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> pushing her in, but I didn't. Oh, I know you didn't. You didn't even have enough brains to take out your own perm rods. <laughs> yeah, but then who did it? Well, there are a lot of obvious suspects. 
But the person who isn't obvious is you, Principal Ellis. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> really? Isn't this how it happened? You're walking down the hall as usual. The day was done, the bell had rung. It was time to relax. Well, it's ten minutes after three. I think I'll push your white girl in the closet. <laughs> the dumbest thing I have ever heard. Sorry, Eli. Damn, I was so sure. <laughs> now, we've eliminated Angela, Connie, Fudd, <laughs> and Mr. Ellis for the time being. But the uh, person we can't eliminate is you, Norman. <laughs> I don't have to sit still for this. There is no reason in the world why I would have hurt Julie. Even if I had a reason, why would I risk my relationship with your mother? You pushed Julie in the closet to save your relationship with my mother. You were down near the equipment cage around 3 o'clock yesterday. Miss Gulch. I uh, got your note asking me to meet you here. Mr. Lamb, how good of you to come. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so well dressed and prompt. <laughs> baby, baby, what you do? Oh. <gasps> Shh. Someone's coming. It's that brat, Julie Burton. Ugh. If she sees us, she'll rat on us to her mother. Then make sure she doesn't see us. <laughs> Next to Ellis's, that's the stupidest flashback I've ever heard. I was nowhere near the equipment room. Oh, really? Well, then, if you were nowhere near the equipment room, then how come I found this note there? Dear Norman, meet me by the equipment cage at 3 o'clock. Signed, Ms. Gulch. You're sick. There's nothing between us. That note was simply yes. to... I love him. I love him. <laughs> Beg pardon? Ever since he started dressing so great, I couldn't stand it anymore. Especially when he wears tweed. <laughs> so I sent him that note so we could be alone. I thought we were going to soak the birdies. <laughs> Those birdies could have been covered with an inch of crud. I didn't care. But I didn't push Julie in. All I wanted was Lamb, Lamb, the teaching man. Really, Eileen, I didn't know anything about this. <laughs> you never wore tweed for me. I'm gonna go get some more Cheetos. I'm sure I won't be missed. Well, teaching man. <laughs> Teach us about this note. I admit, that's my note, but I didn't take it to the equipment room. Well, then, whoever left this note there also left this. One long, blonde hair. This will tell us who done it. It's probably just Julie's, Mr. Detective. <laughs> no, because, you see, Julie's a natural blonde, and this one has a dark root. <laughs> so we're looking for a bleach job. Question is, does she or doesn't she? <laughs> Nylon, it's rootless. <laughs> Nature's very best. <laughs> well, this doesn't make sense. There's got to be a bleached blonde in this room. More Cheetos, anyone? <laughs> uh, Mom? Were you at school yesterday? 
Yes, I was. I... I was looking for Miss Gulch. I heard you talking about her, and when I found that note in Norman's pocket, I got a little jealous. I decided to go down to the school just to get a glimpse at this Gulch. I wanted to surprise her, so I didn't knock. I just opened the door. Nobody was there. I felt a little silly, so I, I crumpled up the note and I, I threw it away. Mom, that was the equipment cage. It's in Gulch's office. Are you saying that I'm the one that locked you in the cage? Oh, honey, I feel terrible. It's okay, Mom. You just ruined my life is all. <laughs> At least you still have your hair, you cow. <laughs> You ball little. All right. Girl, girl. 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 I guess our work is done. <laughs> Come on, let's go over to Spencer's house. Oh, hello, Mr. Donatelli. I hate you kids. <laughs> it doesn't come off. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>